My name is Minnie, and I'm a grade 10 student from the Canadian International School of Guangzhou, here in China. So, has this ever happened to you? After reading a book or watching a movie, you find yourself so engrossed in the story that even after you close the book or turn off the TV, everything around you feels strange and you're not sure of where you are. Well, that happens to me a lot, and what I do is that I pinch myself to bring me back to the real world. So, you're probably thinking, wait a minute, of course we're in the real world. Where else could we be? Well, it turns out that whether we realize it or not, many of us are living in a bubble, which isn't really part of the real world. Many of us have been sucked into a bubble. So what do I mean by a bubble? Is it that foamy sphere of liquid? Or is that app that allows fans to connect with K-pop idols? Well, the bubble I'm talking about today is about a group of people who share similar worldviews. Basically, being stuck in a bubble means that you only connect with people who are very similar to you, who talk about the same kind of topics, who share the same kind of opinion, and who do the same kind of activities. You might think that your current group of friends just sort of came together all randomly. But actually, things in life aren't just random as you think it might be. For instance, if I were to ask all of you here to pick a number between 1 to 20, you would expect an even outcome. But it turns out that normally, some numbers are chosen far more often than the other. And why is that? This is because some numbers, such as seven, have special meaning and tend to stick in our head, even subconsciously. So a lot of times, what we might consider as a random decision is actually sort of pre-programmed. So now, think about a group of friends. Do they speak the same language as you do? Do they have the same hobbies? Do they share the same beliefs? Are they like you in all of ways? If the answer is yes, then your choices probably weren't random because we all tend to gravitate towards people who are similar to us. Well, what's wrong with that? That's perfectly fine isn't it? Well, yes and no. When you hang around with the same group of friends all the time, you tend to start thinking alike. For instance, maybe you and your friend believe that Harry Potter is the best book series ever written. Since you all agree on this, the shared opinion is constantly reinforced and validated by your friends. You'll become more and more convinced that this shared opinion is the only right opinion, and you'll become less willing to accept anything else. Associating with the same group of friends all the time also exposes you to fewer ideas, which tends to make us narrow-minded, more prejudiced, less empathetic, less tolerant, and less creative. We'll tend to start create shallow stereotypes of people or places, or to be misinformed about numerous topics. Over time, people who live in a bubble are more or more like what we say in Chinese, as a person who feels the sky from the bottom of the well. They believe they see the whole world and understand it completely, when in fact, they can only see a tiny fraction of it and fail to see what lies beyond their view. And what's worse is that many of us live in a bubble within a bubble, we might be living in a bubble that we've created among our friends or family. And this bubble might be inside a larger bubble created by our school, our community, or our culture. This world is full of diverse people and culture, and they all communicate very differently. But if you're only stuck in your bubble or know little about other cultures, you might find it very uncomfortable to talk to someone who's different from you. While Germans and Americans speak more directly, Chinese, Japanese, 
and Korean are generally more indirect. Many Westerners believe that it's better to be straightforward in order to avoid misunderstandings. And they'll ask you instantly for clarification if they think you've been ambiguous. But if they're talking to someone from Japan who might not be so direct, it may cause embarrassment and the Westerner might be perceived as rude or disrespectful. Even governments and large companies run into problems when they fail to realize that they're in a bubble. Many transnational corporations stumble or fail when they try to enter foreign markets because they assume that consumers everywhere think and behave the same way as the consumers in their bubble. eBay, for example, shut down their portal in China only after two years of launching it because they assume that the market in China will be the same as the market in the US. Even me, when I was writing this speech, realized that I'm constantly in a bubble. For instance, my first draft of the speech was a complete monotone essay. And this is because I just didn't think about how it would sound like on stage. So how do individuals like you and me, even governments and large companies, get into their bubble in the first place? Human nature has a lot to do with it. By nature, we humans tend to be drawn to people we feel like we can relate to. We like the sense of belonging that comes from being part of a group. Living in a bubble offers safety and comfort. So we stay in our bubble where things make sense and we feel secure. Also, in today's world, people are more focused on personal success. Many people value their own feelings or rights as a priority, regardless of how their actions or words affect others. They live in their own world and believe that only their values or opinions are worth considering. And plus, many people nowadays obtain their information from social media. For example, you believe that students should be able to use their phone at school. Since you agree on this, you, came across, you might come across an article about it on social media. If you spend 10 minutes on it, Big Data will quickly recommend you another art article on it. Over time, you've read so many articles about this that you come to believe everyone shares the same opinion, that students should be able to use their phone at school. So that's how yeah, Big Data and social media help suck us into a bubble. So, but if you're able to burst this bubble and get out of your comfort zone, you'll become more connected to the real world. When you step out of a bubble, you'll become more open-minded and more, connect, more creative and be more aware of global issues because you're open to new knowledge and then you'll find solutions to problems. This is when innovation takes place. Innovation is about interacting with new knowledge, and this is exactly what you gain when you burst out of your bubble. You also become more empathetic because you're able to relate to others' feelings or situations. This will help improve your relationships because understanding is key in good communication. So now, you might want to ask, how can we get out of our bubble? How can we reconnect to the real world? So here are some tips. Number one, in order to realize that you are in a bubble, you have to, in order to break out of the bubble, you have to realize that you are in a bubble, which you might have done already by listening to this talk. Next, figure out how and why you got into your bubble. Three, maybe turn off the recommended option on your social media and browse out new content for a few minutes every day. Four, if you don't understand why people are behaving in a certain way, try to understand them from their point of view. Last but not least, reach out to new people. Talking with different people really expands your mindset. So now, 
Are you ready to burst out the bubble that you or your society has created for you? Are you ready to reconnect with the real world and embrace all the wonders it has to offer? I hope that when you reconnect with the real world, you will not only discover more of it, and you'll be able to find the real you. Thank you.